Hello everyone, and welcome back to the finals of Revolution's Grand Prix Greenglade. So, just in case for those of you who don't know, Revolution is a custom card constructed format. Um, it's It has uh, five sets in it currently, or six sets actually. Um, and its power level is based around a standard-esque for format. Um, so, out of 24 people, um, we have Infinity Chef on this side of the table, and Phoenix Star, otherwise known as All Who Wander, on the other. And these guys have made it to the finals. It's going to be exciting. So, uh, Phoenix Star, All Who Wander, is playing Mono Black Midrange, centered around the powerful triple pipped uh, black cards Villainy and Threzak. Um, also has Mercalta's top end and a bunch of cheap creatures at the midrange like Lore Blackmailer. However, um, uh, all Who Wander isn't the only person packing Lori Blackmailers because Infinity Chef is playing Red Black uh, Rack. Um, the format has eight rack effects, a bunch of discard payoffs, and so definitely a time to go ham with that. Uh, Going to start off with a turn one Raven's Ire to force uh, All Who Wander to discard Threzak. Threzak is definitely an insane threat if it ever gets to land. Um, but uh, going to fire right back with the Lori Blackmailer. Going to force the discard on Ruined Shrine. Looks like he's going to run out, uh, ooh, is running out the Dark Bargain, draws into a Swamp, um, and now can uh, Swamp, Duress, take out the Villainy before it gets to Resolve next turn. That's what you like to see. Villainy is definitely one of the big draws of this deck. And now, even though Alu Wander has a good clock with the Lori Blackmailers uh, and still has the Mercalt, um, Infinity Chef has mitigated it for a decent amount. And next turn, can uh, Seal and Blood force a discard on the Mercalt? And then All Who Wander only has Lori Blackmailers as threats, which are not bad, but they're not insane either. Also, interesting discard on the rack instead of the land. Yeah, I would have, because I 100% would have discarded the land there and then just, or sorry, I would have, yeah, 100% discarded the land there and then just played Seal and Blood and then gone into a rack effect. Okay, he's going to crack the Dark Bargain to draw a card and draws into a Soul Sucker, a rat of its own, um, but is forced to play the Seal and Blood right here to... Uh, yoink the Mercalt right here before it comes down next turn. Because once it comes down, kind of can't do anything about that. Um, but yeah, it still has uh, a good four-turn clock over here. And, oh god, and top decks of Villainy. That's, that isn't that, that's ever the problem with uh, discard as your primary interaction suite. If they top deck it, well, you're just out of luck. And this looks like it might be a quick game one of the finals. Uh, a little bit of flooding from Infinity Chef does have the Soul Sucker, but gets no value out of it because uh, All Who Wander is empty handed. It's just kind of here as a blocker for the Lore Blackmailer. However, uh, All Who Wander also has not drawn into uh, a spell to trigger Villainy. But the problem is, uh, once this trade happens, yeah, Soul Sucker, Lore Blackmailer are going to trade. That triggers Villainy, and All Who Wander gets to draw a card. Damn, draws into it. What is this? Three copies of Villainy in the top 12? This is insane luck on All Who Wander's part. And then another Soul Sucker. Um, I mean, sure, can drop the Soul Sucker, but then, yeah, there's like, there's just no. Yeah, because it has to swing up the Lori Blackmailer. Chef presumably wants to block. Yeah, has to block here, but then All Who Wander gets to draw two cards off the Villainy. Yeah, and then gets to drop Diabolical Minion plus Smirk. Is playing the smirk first. I think that this is a sequencing mistake. Um, though it could be that... Oh, actually, I guess Wander's trying to... Uh, uh, is going for the whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you draw a card and lose two life trigger. Which I think is fine, but I think you'd rather have the drain here. The reason being that a drain here turns um, turns your Diabolical Minion plus smirk into a two-turn clock rather than a three-turn clock. Um, and you... And then... If you hit a single, I guess the thought is if you hit a single thing off, a single thing that can trigger villainy, um, smirk alone kills. So I can see that. And then conspicuous homicide is that. So I think that Infinity Chef is just dead here. And yeah, that's a land top deck. Man, Chef really flooded out there. And that's game in a blisteringly quick uh, game one, considering that these are both like uh, mid range decks. I guess they're both mid range decks with like. Aggre that also have aggressive lines in disguise because of stuff like uh, villainy as a damage engine and rack as a damage engine. But whoo, that was that was one hell of a uh, game one. Now looking at sideboards real quick. 
um, from Infinity Chef. I don't think you really need the Rune Mage's Wrath. They're, like, fine in this matchup, but, like, lots of the stuff you really want to hit is too big for it. Um, Mystery Stones may be fine. I don't really think so, though. Honorless Devourer to go over the top. I could see it. Um, Feast of the Crows, not really a fan, but it does kill Diabolical Minions like nobody's business, so maybe. Uh, you already have a uh, main deck 2 Rune Mage's Wrath, though, and that does that better. Crucify is a way to kill Murkald or Threzak, I really like. Uh, Kesserin is another grindy win con, maybe. Like, I don't know. I definitely think that you want the the Crucifies. The rest, I'm kind of, like, ambivalent, or I think it depends on how you, like, interpret the matchup. Uh, meanwhile, all the way at the top here. Uh, for All Who Wander, I think you definitely want the Duresses. Walking Pollution takes care of, like, uh, takes care of walkers, but I don't think that's a big thing. Black Spy, not really relevant here. It's a good early game creature, but, like, I guess you, you can bring in Black Spy as, like, a way to just, like, kill, uh, soul, like, soul catchers or whatever without trading. Feast of the Crows to be able to kill the, uh, the little, uh, rats, maybe. I don't, I don't super buy it. I could see that, I could see it, though. I could see, like, Duress, Black Spy, Feast of Crows, all three of those feel like reasonable bring-ins, but this really feels like a, uh, a matchup where more so than the sideboarding or like the the, the deck composition um it really depends on like the hand that's drawn because i feel like both these decks have like really good counterplay to each other it just depends on like what cards they draw and when it's really like a sequencing game okay all who wander with turn one duress turn two smirk and then has two bombie threats here meanwhile um infinity chef has the turn one uh raven's Eye into uh, Dark Bargain, also has Dream Reaper. It's not a great hand, but it's still very keepable. Uh, gonna route the Raven's Eye turn one. Um, probably just grabs, huh, do you grab, I don't think you grab the, yeah, you grab like Trezak probably. Is You could also grab Smirk and put them off a of turn two play, but that feels a little bad when you don't have like a clock uh, that, that can like kill them before that. And also Smirk dies to Rune Mage's Wrath, so I think you, Oh no, okay, he's gonna take Smirk. Hmm, I don't know if I super agree with this, but we'll see how it goes. Oh my god, and all who wonder with the villainy top deck. Duress coming in, you probably take out the Dark Bargain here to prevent card advantage. You can just run uh, all who, you can just run uh, Infinity Chef out of resources. Yeah, gonna take Dark Bargain. And now Chef is in a bad spot. Two three drops they can't play. Um, Ferocious Flame is kind of useless here. Uh, and if they don't hit their third land drop, they're just out of the game. And god, a Dark Bargain as well for all who wander. Kind of just gas. Is not playing the Dark Bargain, though. Why? I'm actually really confused by that. Like, what are you hinting at? Yeah, I'm not sure what all who wander is playing around here. Okay, fortunately, uh, Infinity Shift does get the land top deck. Is going to play Dream Reaper. Oh, I guess maybe not playing Dark Bargain to, like, play Villainy and then use Dark Bargain to trigger it. I think that it's better to just drop the Dark Bargain, though. Because the Dark Bargain is more likely to just draw you into real action. Okay, going to swing in with the Dream Reaper. All the Wanderers forced to discard a card. You probably just discard... Uh, oh, I was going to say you discard the Dark Bargain. Again, I don't think that triggering Mercal, or triggering Villainy is worth keeping the Dark Bargain here. I kind of feel like that's a bad play. Um, I think that if you're All the Wanderer, though, you untap, you play Threzak, you kill Dream Reaper, uh, draw three cards, make Threzak uh, a 4-4. Four, four. You just I think losing the 9 life here is totally worth it. Um, to just get to just Trezak and just completely run them over. See so up here comes Trezak with the um, with its ability on the board. Um, it's gonna get Ferocious Flamed, so it doesn't get to grow into a five five. Uh, and all the wander unfortunately still loses the three life from putting the counters on Trezak, but still gets to gas all the way back up. Oh, what and drew two villainies? This is actually insane luck. Like. Obviously, All Who Wander is navigating this well, but this is kind of stupidly good luck on, on All Who Wander's part to get three villainies in the top 15 uh, e each time, as well as, like, their biggest threats and, like, good curse. Like, yeah, this is just, this is just insane. Yes, yeah, so he gets to play the villainy, then draws a card, and then just plays, like, double Dark Bargain on face. Like, why not? I, okay, I kind of don't get, I guess... Well, Seal and Blood is going to be able to take the third villainy here. Um, but yeah, this is a emphatically uphill battle for for Infinity Chef here. Okay, all who wander flooding out a bit, but it's not going to matter because of these dark bargains. 
each one shoots Infinity Chef in the face for four and draws uh, All Who Wander two cards. So can definitely put a, a very fast clock on uh, Infinity Chef with this. Okay, the Crucify, which unfortunately there are no creatures around. Okay, he's cracking Dark Bargain. Ooh, gets a, thre a natural Threzak. Um, I think you just... Oh, he's going to play the, another Dark Bargain. Shoot for four. I think that you can also, and then put like... You put Mercalt on top with the Dark Hand Enterprises. Yeah, I think that seems kosher. Yeah, just just put Mercalt on top with, uh, with the Dark Hand Enterprises ability, and yep, is gonna do that. It says all the threats set up, and yeah, just no good outs. Red black is not exactly the color of removing enchantments, and all of Infinity Chef's uh, interaction was, uh, was like hand attack, but who in a blisteringly quick finals under fifteen minutes. Uh, All Who Wander uh, takes the uh, Grand Prix Green Glade. I think that was, I think that was a clean sweep throughout the entire tournament, um, and this is definitely proving that uh, Villainy mid range is a good archetype. Um, Villainy definitely like having a strong pedigree in other custom formats, and still in the last tournament putting up a good show. Um, I believe it made the semifinals before losing to another similar. Uh, black red x mid-range deck a mardu mid-range deck but yeah like it, it definitely seems like it's an archetype that is good and is here to stay and particularly praise um on lots of uh, a the common interaction because of stuff like dark hand enterprises and b praise on like aggro decks very strong so and aggro is definitely a popular archetype i think naya aggro uh, like in or combination aggro and combinations of naya colors was the biggest uh archetype this gp so definitely the GP to bring Villainy to, if anything. But yeah, um, I'm going to uh, pause for a second here and let's see if we can get All Who Wander on the mic. Okay, so we now have uh, All Who Wander on the mic. So thanks Hello. for joining. Yeah, so thanks for joining me. Congratulations on the GP win. Um, I guess the first question I have uh, would be, what was your route to the finals, aka like what matchups did you play? Were there any that were particularly difficult or that would like suggest stuff that you'd want to like? change or adjust for the deck uh, the next time around? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I want to thank you for, for having me on stream, Caillou. Um, as for sort of the, the path felt relatively smooth. The kind of the matchups that I was worried about um, were sort of aggressive decks, uh, especially experience-based decks. And I, I don't, didn't hit any of those. Um, and I'm not even sure if there were any experience decks that made it into the, the tourney. Um, as for my actual individual matches, so my first game was against one of those sort of aggressive decks, the, the Naya aggressive mid-range that um, has been doing particularly well recently uh, by Squid Pizza. Uh, the reason I was sort of worried about this match is because they have a lot of sort of, um, they can deal me a lot of damage very quickly and my life total um, can, um, is, is uh, a resource that I draw upon very heavily. Uh, and also, they can pump some of their creatures outside of, of villainy range, uh, and cards like you know Jericho's assistant or codename Cold Blood help to give uh, sort of inevitability against my removal. And on top of that, they have Wilderkin Behemoth, which is very, I, I believe, impossible for me to deal with main board, and I only have edicts out of the sideboard to deal. So I was pr pretty worried about that match, um, but it went overall went pretty well. Uh, although I believe in no small part that was just due to, to mana screw on my opponent's part, which is unfortunate, but I suppose it isn't a uh, reality of playing a three-color uh, aggressive deck. Uh, my second match was um, against Chillbrain, who was on uh, Mardu Feast. So this was the deck that uh, I lost to um, sort of last time in the in the previous GP. It sort of crushed my... Uh, metaphorical dreams. Um, overall, I think I just uh, had a better handle on wh how I needed to play in order to win the matchup, and I think that I did better accordingly, and I also managed to dodge Alonzo, who is really... Uh, Alonzo and Amrit, for the most part, who are really, really quite strong against me, but I managed to kind of power through those. Uh, so I was quite pleased with how I performed there. Uh, third match was against... Um, let's see here. Against Drake... Uh, who's playing Jund. Um, I was um, not especially concerned about Jund because I feel that my deck is um, designed to help outgrind other mid-range decks. Uh, and the match went relatively easily, I think, although 
I was quite worried about tyrant attributes because it really does sort of go over the top of everything I'm trying to do. Uh, the fourth match was against, let's see here, uh, Cool Beans. Uh, this was another, uh, this was a red green aggro deck as opposed to the, a Naya aggro deck. I have never played against this sort of matchup before, and I was a little bit worried about sort of the aggressive nature again, uh, but the matchup ended up going pretty well, uh, although my life total could get very, very low uh, at certain positions. And then the final match of the, um, whatever you call it, the regular uh, rounds, uh, or no, sorry, this was when we cut to the top eight. Uh, so in my top eight, I had a buy round five. The buy didn't even show up to the round. I was really unhappy about that. Uh, sixth uh, was against Rodzos, um, and Rod Rodzos was Rodzos was on uh, sort of uh, a different take on villainy. Uh, his was more of an Esper control deck, and I was actually really impressed by how the deck performed. Uh, I had expected it to be kind of an an easy matchup, and I was very very wrong. Uh, Hugo in particular was very, very strong against me, and I don't have any way of, of dealing with my opponent's villainies, uh, obviously, which is a real problem. Uh, but I managed to grind through it in part by uh, by using uh, by removing them all from the game using um, memory hostage, uh, which definitely helps. And then the finals uh, was a little bit of a um, a stomp. It was against uh, Red Black, uh, featuring um, Infinity Chef, and Although uh, Infinity Chef really tried to play to his outs very well, and the deck he built is incredibly sweet, and I've had really struggled against it in the past, I just drew a whole lot of villainies. And honestly, it's very difficult for Red Black Discard to answer yeah, um, once it tri falls. Triple villainy in the top 12 game one, and then triple villainy in the top 15 game two. Yeah, that it felt non-statistical and ridiculous, but you know, uh, I'm not going to complain about it that's just how the game goes yeah and and again I think it it's, it's part part of it was also um when you're playing rack and your answers are all hand attack you kind of are inev inevitably leaving yourself open to your opponent top decking stuff so um and mm -hmm. in red black infinity chef did not like have like reactive removal that actually worked on villainy um mm -hmm. like like their hand at the end there was like just rune mage's wrath and like while that is good against the creature half of the deck um, well, I guess it's good against creatures not named Threzak and Murkalt, which are the, really the scary right. ones you want to remove. So mm -hmm. pretty low on Rune Mage's Wrath in that respect. But um, it, it's just it's just generally like ill-equipped to deal with like the most powerful threats that the deck has to offer once they actually hit the board. Which I think is also yeah. one of the strengths of this build of Villainy, is that you would usually expect like a Villainy deck to have um, way more non-creature spells. Like... Other than uh, Villainy itself, there's only like 14 non-creature spells in the main deck, eclipsed by the number of creatures. But yeah. really the strength of that is that like it's hard to like answer both game plans, and it also lets it be a lot more proactive than a typical Villainy deck. So Yes, definitely. And I like that unlike some of the other sort of Villainy lists I'd seen earlier, it really makes use of the uh, the first mode on Villainy whenever a creature dies for the first time each turn to its full extent, because it can really help grind through some of the controller matchups that more, uh, that black aggressive decks that aren't playing Villainy might struggle to, to do. Yeah, just having like your own creatures that you can like make uh, trades with and then just be like, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm coming out on top here is really great. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I guess, are there... Any like changes you would make to the deck based on your experience this tournament, or does it seem pretty kosher for now? Um, I think everything really performed very well. The sort of uh, flex slots that I'm considering uh, changing uh, in the main board, uh, the Vicious Cleaners and the two Duresses, um, those were sort of uh, a meta call. I realized I didn't have anything to really answer um, Reanimator, and I was expecting maybe a couple of Reanimator decks, so that's why the Cleaners are in there. Uh, but I could also see something like moving those to the sideboard instead of something else in the main, uh, and put, or putting um, uh, stones, uh, mystery stones to the sideboard as a more kind of effective answer. Um, and then the duresses were sort of to fill a, fle a flex slot. Uh, I realized I didn't have, I expected perhaps a little bit more villainy uh, in the tournament, uh, just because I had performed relatively well with it and there had been a good amount of it last tournament. Uh, and I didn't actually have a way of, of dealing with a resolved villainy of my own, so some Duress's main board seemed like a reasonable choice. 
Um, but I could see changing them, although they did perform very well. In my... um, as for the sideboard, um, flex slots there. Uh, I didn't really find I brought in the Black Spies very often, or when I brought them in, they weren't especially impactful. Um, the amount of weight-based removal is pretty limited. In fact, it's it's mostly limited to um, Event Horizon, which is often going to go at my, um, my... And I guess Change of Penance as well, but both of those are more often going to be going for things like Villainy. Uh, so the actual uh, protection from white or hexproof from white isn't especially relevant there. Um, so I could potentially see replacing the black spies. And I could also see changing the number of waking pollutions. I do like having an answer to planeswalkers since, uh, as sort of my matches this tournament showed, uh, my opponent resolving planeswalkers tended to be very, very bad for me. Um, Amaret and Hugo especially, but also uh, Jora once. Both were very, very strong against my deck. Uh, so I definitely like the waking player. Uh, other than that, um, I feel like everything really pulled its weight, and I felt felt like the deck tied together very nicely. Sounds good, yeah. And not gonna lie, I was also expecting a lot more villainy, especially given the proliferation of aggro decks in the uh, mm -hmm. in in league running up to the tournament. But it seems like all the people playing aggro decks just kept playing aggro decks into the tournament. So yeah, um, and fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so I guess. Unless you have any any other comments, uh, the last question uh, mm -hmm. is the classic: What are you going to champion out of your deck? That's a really good question. It's something that I've been uh, thinking about a lot. Now, I think we already have a villainy promo, right? Because that's the sort of the obvious um, choice. Do we have a villainy promo? Let me check. Because I I believe I got one for my week uh, performance uh, with the, one of the missions. Perfect. Oh, a mission promo. Okay, the. I wasn't thinking. I was. I wasn't thinking about the mission promo, but that might be. Mm -hmm. That might be possible. Let me see. Viridian's last mission special. Oh yeah. Okay. It's it's a. That's why I, I was thinking. I don't remember an alt art, but then it's that's because it's the original uh, Urchin King mm -hmm. art. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, uh, because so uh, for, for, for those of you who are not in the know, uh, villainy is not actually an original card to Viridian's last mission. It's actually um, a reprint from I uh, from Story Time. So. So this is using the original art and flavor text uh, of that, but yeah. So I think I'd want to give something else sort of a, a turn in the spotlight. My inclination is towards uh, the individual that made it all possible, diabolical minions scheming behind the scenes to uh, give me the life I needed to stay out of range of some of the more aggressive decks. I also just love the card. It feels so much fun to play. It's so good in multiples and just love it. So yeah, and I think diabolical minion is a, is a good choice because I think it's a very iconic slash unique uh, card to this deck, um, mm -hmm. and it's yeah like I think like I was uh, I was low on it at first, but then just seeing how it stacks up, it's, yeah, especially like you said in multiples, um, it like it really like and it also really gives the deck like a, a very clean curve as well. So yeah, yes, I, I'm, I'm I'm very high on diabolical minion as the as the promo. Yeah, excited I to am see. As well. Yeah, so excited to see what you'll bring for that. And yeah, uh, do yeah. you have any other closing comments before we wrap up for the day? I just want to thank uh, the organizers for setting up the tournament, the judges for answering all of my judge calls when I missed various uh, various triggers, uh, for you and all of the other commentators for, for commentating the tournament, and to all of my opponents for really awesome games. This has been a great uh, season so far, a great tournament, and I'm looking forward to continuing to play. Word. And yeah, uh, we I think we still have one more tournament before uh, another rotation, so that's going to be exciting. I think we've seen yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've seen lots of iteration on various decks throughout uh, the Viridian's last mission season era. So I'm hoping that we'll get like a nice turnout for the last one. And hey, I think lots of people were excited about Villainy, but then not a lot, lot of people put up their dukes and actually br uh, brought it uh, to tournaments. So I hope hopefully this performance convinces people like, hey, it's a real threat. We should try mm -hmm. it out for the or season finale. Absolutely, or try and figure out a way to best uh, best beat it. I'm looking forward to the challenge. Oh yeah, I see. I brought Reanimator to this tournament because I was like, man, Reanimator's been like destroying Villainy, and then like mm -hmm. there's two people on Villainy, and I was sad. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, it's a, another matchup I'm really sort of worried about. Uh, cleaners in the main board is sort of a concession for that, um, and hostages in the sideboard is another concession. But I really have never played the matchup, so I I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... Other than that, thanks everyone for watching, and see you all next thanks. season.
And hey, oh, if and, and if you're if you're if you're someone who's just like seeing this on my channel but hasn't participated in a custom card format before, hey, glad to have you. Um, and there's links in my description uh, to the server where you can uh, join in. Uh, we'll we can throw you a deck list or brew or help you brew a deck list uh, if you give us like decks you prefer to play in other formats. And then yeah, just like get playing. I think that like part of the real fun of uh, custom cards is actually getting to play with them in like an in like a reasonable setting like using them as game pieces rather than just like designing them and being like hey yeah this exists on the shelf so the i'm super glad that like uh we like compared to like five years ago have like a, a, a great presence of custom card play now so yeah thanks to everyone who's made this happen once again congratulations all who wander and until next month thank you this is going to be caillou signing off